Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining for today's uh, webinar. I am Ansh Agarwal and I will be your host today. I represent MAO. MAO is one of the leading customer experience solution providers in Africa. Today we are presenting building a 2020 strategy for an omnichannel contact center. We have with us Fidelis, the customer experience manager, Gulf African Bank, Vinay Subaramaya, director Technobrain Group, and Rahul Dutshi, uh, director marketing and strategy MAO. Just to lay down some ground rules, uh, if you have any questions during the presentation, please type them in the chat box. Uh, we would like to answer these questions, but at the end of the webinar, during the Q&A session. Moving on. So uh, there is always this uh, misconception uh, regarding multi-channel is always an omni-channel. That's not the truth. So uh, multi-channel uh, means that you have different channels, uh, but uh, omni-channel is more where you are preserving the context. So as far as the, you are present, preserving the context for, an, or for a contact center, you have an omni-channel contact center. Moving on to the agenda. So we will be presenting why there, there has been a shift towards uh, creating a CF memories. Uh, uh, why there is a uh, technology focus is there in the you know, contact center technology in the contact center today? What are the top challenges and focus areas? And then we'll be moving on uh, why GAP, Gulf African Bank, trust MAO. Uh, we have with us Vinay Subaramaya. He is the uh, director at Technobrain Group and has a decade experience in the middle management and top management. From the past two and a half years, Vinay has been responsible and heading the BPO ITS business unit. Technobrain has customers from verticals ranging from public, private, BFSI, FMCG, ISP, pay TV, NGO, and UN bodies. Vinay has been given the task to manage and ensure client data security and quality of service is not compromised, along with managing the PL for the business. Vinay is a passionate thespian and wildlife photographer. Keen about studying scientific articles and historical aspects are other hobbies of Vinay. Thank you, Vinay, for joining in for this webinar. We have with us Fidelis. Uh, Fidelis uh, is a contact center uh, manager and customer experience at Gulf African Bank. He is a self-reliant and enthusiastic customer service supervisor with over five years experience at different levels in BPO and banking industry. Overall in charge of the national contact center and customer experience, and tasked with the duty of planning, formulating, and implementing CX strategy while enhancing customer interaction, reviewing of processes, and tracking of SLAs to gain competitive advantage of superior services. Some of his key achievements have been the full automation of contact center at GAP, and a GAP has been, had been voted the first runner up at the most customer centric bank, Tier 3, 2018. Thank you, Fidelis, for joining in. We have with us Rahul Dutshi, Director of Strategy and Marketing at MAO. As a Director of Strategy and Marketing at MAO, Rahul has been instrumental in devising the go-to-market strategies for MAO. With deep expertise and experience in the contact center infrastructure, omni-channel customer experience and customer service operations, Rahul is MAO's customer journey evangelist. Thank you, Rahul, Rahul for joining in this uh, webinar. Over to you, Rahul. Awesome. Uh... So I'd like to begin uh, by welcoming uh, uh, the attendees who have joined in today. Uh, I can see attendees joining in from uh, Nigeria, from Kenya, from UAE, and from India, of course. Um, I would also like to welcome my co-panelists here, uh, Fidelis and Vinay. I'm sure their experience would add a significant value uh, to this conversation. Uh, to, so to begin with, uh, let's try and understand how this uh, customer experience uh, became so attractive to all the enterprises that they started it, uh, they, that they started focusing on it. So if you see the trend over here, so there are some uh, uh, some of the figures which have been posted on the slide. However, uh, two key uh, important uh, notes uh, and trends that I would like to discuss are if you if you actually go and check Google and figure out what has been the trend of uh, the search term customer experience itself. And you'll figure out in last uh, seven to eight years, it has been it has grown actually four to five x, which in turn 
tells you the people who are researching about it in turn tells you the uh, kind of problems that people have faced with it and in turn tells you the focus uh, of a lot of enterprises who um, actually start to think about customer experience as a function uh, which before that was more of a uh, uh, a disparate effort between different departments be it marketing be it customer service be it contact center so um, uh, over a period of time this became a holistic strategy for entire organization rather than few efforts here and there in different departments um how this happened this again is um, again is a story for that matter uh, but uh, it started to happen enterprises started to react so so quickly that uh, the people with uh, people with customer experience uh, designations for that matter people with expertise in customer experience um started to show up linkedin and that is the other stat that uh, i would be i was i'm i'm so i was so talking about and couple of years we a couple of years back we did some research uh, around that which suggested that people with such designation uh, with such seniority for that matter who uh, held uh, who still hold for the matter um, for that matter uh, 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 a chair at the at the management level in in in, in enterprise with the focus on customer experience significantly increased over a period of time so so those are the two stats which tells you the entire focus uh, of uh, customer experience by different organizations however uh, the challenge was not that i mean uh, uh, not all the organizations were successful immediately in fact a lot of organizations still struggle with customer experience because customer experience is not just one uh, simple plug and play kind of a solution it involves uh technology decisions it involves um, uh, your hiring it involves your culture and a lot of other subtle things and um, i'm sure vine and uh, um, uh, and fidelis who have been there done that for that matter would speak a lot about uh, those challenges uh next slide so so let's try and understand what uh, uh, from a simple operations perspective how customer experience has has actually transformed and um, uh, and to begin with if you think of uh, customer experience uh, right from the expectation of the customer uh, apart from uh, what he has bought as a product or a service from the organization it also implies how you are reaching out to him with that particular knowledge or how you are servicing that um, um, probably in a in a in a post buying scenario how you are resolving his queries now there was a time when you would probably uh, you were as a as a consumer you were only reaching out on your mobile phone uh, to the enterprises to get those problems solved uh, however um, it changed the scenario completely changed uh first with email uh then uh with uh, uh, then with social channels which included first facebook then twitter uh and uh now with a lot of messaging platforms as well uh when i say messaging platforms i mean there are groups around whatsapp who would be talking about your brand there are uh, there is viber in few geographies there is line messenger facebook messenger for that matter and uh, you would not know for that matter which um uh, what is the kind of uh, uh, messages or perceptions that are being exchanged about the brand uh, from simple customer service standpoint it primarily means two things one is uh, irrespective of the channel uh, be it email phone uh, social chat and so on and so forth uh, any channel from which the customer arrives you should still see customer as one customer is the king and whatever uh, channel the customer is using uh, whatever his preferences are you must respect that and he might jump those channels also this also gives a second challenge the second challenge is around the context now when i talk about the context uh the customer might reach out to uh, you over contact center or maybe through email through chat with 
same interaction with two different contexts uh, which means that you know in a, in, a, in a typical banking scenario please issue me a checkbook that is one context and uh, please update my address uh, is is, an, is is another context or there might be two different interactions talking about the same context uh, he just drops an email and then calls you immediately right saying i've just dropped an email can you resolve my query which means that you still have to preserve that context with respect to that customer now with those two important challenges uh, uh, how those challenges pan out uh, probably in africa uh, and specifically in bfsi in african region i would probably i would uh, hand it over to vinay uh, vinay over to you uh, uh, please go ahead thanks for that uh, introduction and i uh... It's glad to be a part of this panelist, and I hope my voice is clear and you could hear to me properly. So, coming to the 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 current trends and uh, things that are happening within Africa in the BFSI sector, if you look into the past uh, as well, Africa has been in the leapfrog of certain technologies. Uh, there might be certain things which has been tried, tested in other markets, and uh, people might think that it 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 will take the same evolution to enter into the African market. But uh, it, it's, it's a myth in terms of Africa. There are certain things, be it the adoption of mobile money or be it the adoption of uh, MPSA and things like that, which has taken its birth in African uh, context and has gained a lot of widespread uh, popularity because of the kind of uh, requirement it is fulfilling. So one of the things which still stands for the current trends of the contact center in BFSI is to cater for all these alternative and innovative channels of services that the banks, insurance, and other financial sectors are looking at. And also with, uh, uh, with, with, with the need of handling such out-of-box services, uh, the traditional contact center principles of only handling through call or only handling through email is not something which is suffice. Uh, and it also gives a context that this market is not typically looking at expanding the branches whereby there will be more people, there will be more tillers to handle those things because the banking itself is on the mobile, so it's on the go. So even the expectation of customer experience management uh, is something which is untraditional and it can be sometimes more demanding for technologies to cater for those requirements. But also with the growing rate of micro lending providers in, in this market is also uh, posing a bigger challenge for banks and bigger financial institutions to be more agile, innovative, and also uh, to have more uh, forms of providing the customer experience management. Because at the end of the day, if you want to retain a customer, it has to be only through providing better customer experience. And uh, for insurance sectors, unlike uh, insurance, although the coverage of insurance in the, in the market is less in Africa, but there are more innovative ways coming up, uh, be it providing uh, uh, travel insurance for people commuting within, within the local shuttle service and things like that are the, are the aspects that are taking more widespread popularity in this market. So when you have a, a different segmented customer base handling their expect expectations and handling their experience uh, gives it a bigger challenge uh, for any organization providing those service and having a sturdy backbone in terms of a technology which can cater for such customer experience management uh, is definitely a need of the hour uh, in terms of uh, addressing the current technologies. If you can move on to the next slide, uh, I, I would quickly like to go through the future of African banking. So if you look into the aspects which I mentioned, uh, definitely it is posing a lot of challenge for the regulators to make sure uh, how to protect uh, the interest of the users or the customers uh, in such scenarios where you have myriad of customers coming in from uh, seeking uh, different channels of support, different channels for transactions and interaction. In Africa, with its huge population of unbanked and sometimes vast distance between the towns, uh, mobile will uh, uh, unquestionably be the central to the future of banking uh, in the context. 
the next phase of banking in africa will be characterized also by the rise of regional banks and also the emergence of bigger institutions uh, as the industry moves towards uh, oligopoly kind of market uh, because if you look into certain countries uh, it is mostly dominated by one or two banks or even the regulators are looking at consolidating many banks in in markets where there are too many banks which are operating as well along with the competition from a, a mobile money platform and with all these emerging scenarios technology uh, serves as the key backbone and banks are clearly looking at deploying the technologies which can help them in terms of fighting the terrorism fraud money laundering because these are the three forces that now are threatening the sustainability of any banking system uh within within the african context and also the regulatory issues which include uh, to address the money laundering internet transactions and also the capital requirements uh are, are and also allowing the foreign owners to participate in the domestic banking uh is we is calling for a need of a sturdy backbone technology which can support all these aspects the regulation with the greatest impact on the sector however is likely to be the capital requirements and banks will be required to invest more capital to acquire the technology needed to combat crimes such as the ones mentioned uh, like for the for money laundering or fraud fraud and terrorism uh, and also with with uh, the growing innovation or growing needs of customer interaction uh, the transaction requirements on a call or transaction requirements on a text requires a lot of uh, uh, pci dss compliance and things like that so the future as it says the going on mobile across africa is something what every bank is looking at and also the regulations lending to consolidation is something which is which is already uh, on the move in in markets where there are multiple banks and also the local to regional to continental and to global banking is something what is happening because there are certain leading banks uh, from east africa as well as west africa who are now getting into the footprints of other small pockets of uh, countries within africa and trying to expand their footprint so with all these aspects of the future uh, in in african banking sector uh, having a technology that can cut across to support multiple touch points of customers as well as having uh capability to support in multiple locations are something which is definitely the need of the hour uh if you can move on to the next slide uh so basically if you look into uh, what was traditionally been seen as as the contact center technology or the call center technology per se uh was handling what is factored here in as force the call centers were mostly uh, at the places where any organization first of all they think that contact centers are a call center for any organization and bfi sector bfsi sector is no exception to that so when you only focus your contact centers for handling the feedbacks observation requests complaints or inquiries from your customers that's when you are actually limiting it to the purpose what it has been uh, conceived as 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 a cost center but to make it a cost neutral to start with and also to take it to a profit center there are other aspects of uh, the customer journey or the customer life cycle management which has to be taken care of be it right from the lead generation cross selling upselling telesales or order and activations or in terms of knowing your customers also enabling the customers to do online purchase over an ivr or over a voice call and also handling many other aspects in terms of internal technical support or providing uh, a ticketing system for internal aspects these are all some of the uh, things which were, which which a contact center or an omni channel center uh, has to think of and has to adopt so in that way uh, having all these principles embedded in a technology and which is not an extension of your ip telephony system is something which is what any banking or an institution which is catering for insurance sector needs to be looking at for optimizing their cost and also uh, increasing on the return on investment they would be making on 
So moving on to the uh, next slide. Definitely looking for uh, texting for quick back and forth on the multi-chat platforms. And also to have a structured and unstructured bot because customers or customers in the banking sector or customers in the insurance sector or any of the financial institutions are looking for something where they don't have to spend a lot of time in terms of uh, getting any clarifications or getting any information. So the aspect of artificial intelligence is very much coming into play in Africa as well. Uh, the only limitation or the only uh, reason for its low pace is because of the diversity in the languages or the regional languages which it has within the continent. And also omni-channel self-service is something which is also taking uh, a lot of uh, prominence in the African market uh, where it's not about a self-service only in terms of getting into their website and trying to find an FAQ, but it has to be extended on multiple platforms, which includes the popular chat platforms like Telegram, WhatsApp, and others. And also the digital disruption is definitely, which is going to happen within Africa. And like I mentioned in the beginning, certain things will definitely have a leapfrog effect in Africa where certain things which might not have been tried and tested in the Western market or in the Asian market could be uh, taking its birth in Africa. And also uh, giving a predictive omni-channel support to customer is something which is also uh, looking very futuristic for uh, Africa in terms of uh, with, the, with the adoption of analytics and machine learning and artificial intelligence and also with the advent of video and watch based banking which has already taken up its shape in certain other markets uh, African context is also looking at uh, providing all these scenarios uh, with with these and with these information what I have provided uh, I would now like to pass it on to uh, somebody who is a user and uh, somebody who can actually explain what uh, as a user they are looking at to cater for their customers and I hand it over to Fidelis. Okay, hello everyone and uh, thanks uh, for joining us on this particular session. Uh, Gulf African Bank, is, we come in as um, basically uh, a company that has been able to successfully uh, implement or adopt technology uh, for us to be able to offer exemplary service to our customers. So a bit of uh, some history uh, regarding Gulf African Bank, uh, which is uh, prudent for everyone to be able to know us. Uh, we are among uh, the first uh, Islamic bank. Uh, that is, uh, we say we trust our roots uh, back in 2005, uh, whereby uh, a group of people envisioned uh, to be able to change the aspect of uh, from conventional banking to Islamic banking. Uh, that is to be able to offer an alternative channel uh, for the customers, especially now for the Muslim community, uh, but again, not really limited uh, to the Muslim community only. Uh, so we are saying that the bank was incorporated, uh, that is uh, on 9th, uh, 2006, uh, whereby uh, we're able not to be fully commissioned uh, as a commercial bank, uh, that is by 8th um, of January 2008, uh, in a historic event. And uh, what we are saying is we are among the first uh, Islamic fully fledged uh, commercial bank, uh, which has been licensed and uh, known by the Islamic, uh, known by the Central Bank of Kenya, uh, which is uh, our regulator. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Uh, so we'll uh, agree uh, that uh, for customers, uh, if you're able to invest in them and offer them gives, uh, give, give them good service, uh, then most definitely you're going to be able to reap uh, that is profits uh, from them. And uh, you'll agree with me, for any business to survive, um, issues of customer service uh, and issues of being able to give them that exemplary service is very important or very crucial uh, because if you're not able to do that, uh, then it becomes a channel, uh, a challenge. And uh, for most uh, uh, organizations, they always feel that uh, contact centers are more of course centers uh, whereby they just are uh, there to draw salaries and all that. So that misconception needs to be changed uh, whereby we need to say contact centers can now be in a position uh, to be profit centers. 
Uh, but for us to be uh, to be able not to achieve that particular value proposition, then it basically means there are quite a number of things which we need to do right uh, for us to be able to benefit uh, on that. And at Gulf African Bank, that was one of the aspects uh, which we were able uh, to come in, sit down, uh, discuss and agree and say this is the channel or this is the way that we need to move on uh, for us to be able not to turn around our contact center uh, from a cost center to a profit center. Um, so basically our customer interaction at uh, GAB, uh, we normally say customers can be able to do that is a physical branch visits, which is uh, the norm uh, for any bank. Uh, then uh, we have social media pages, uh, that is the likes of uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and the others, uh, whereby customers can either send their inquiries, uh, apart from inquiries, make, maybe make and recommendations in terms of service improvement and all that. Uh, we also have a very robust uh, website chat uh, that is managed at uh, our national contact center, whereby our customers can be able to send queries uh, for us to be able uh, to attend to them. But again, uh, irrespective of having all these uh, customer touch points, uh, the big question comes in, how well are you able to manage these queries? Are you able to deliver them within the required SLAs? Uh, are your customers satisfied and all that? Um, and uh, what I'd indicated is uh, when we started, we were more of an analog office. And uh, when I say analog, it's just basically whereby you only had a switchboard, uh, which calls will come ringing. Uh, only one person can be able to attend to a customer, yet we're having multiple customers calling in. And uh, it becomes an area of dissatisfaction uh, because I'm calling in my bank uh, to be able to be assisted on one or two issues, uh, but again, we are not in a position or we are not capable to be able uh, to achieve that particular aspect. So I said that uh, we lack the sophisticated tools uh, for a modern contact center, uh, which could be able now to handle all those issues. So it has been a good journey. And uh, in April 2015, uh, after discussing with the management, uh, we agreed and said, yes, we can be able to give you an odd uh, to provide you with a budget, uh, which end of day you can be able to come up with a state of the art contact center. And uh, part of it is ensuring that we have a robust system which can be able to manage our customer interactions at a 360 degrees level, just to be able to understand what are the new trends for our customers, what are the kind of the reports that we can be able to generate, uh, and uh, ideally end of day is being able now to bring in the value uh, to the organization. If again you're not able to bring in value to the organization, uh, then becomes a challenge because now we'll say uh, you have a contact center having X number of uh, staff, but again, we're just paying salaries. Uh, what is it that we're able to get uh, out of this uh, particular stuff? Uh, so uh, that is when the process started, uh, whereby we say we needed to bring in a whole new uh, customer experience uh, journey for our customers just to be able to deliver seamless service at the contact center and the more so being consistent. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, before you set up uh, a contact center, there might be, or uh, you must be having some underlying issues uh, which will be able uh, to trigger for you to have that uh, uh, option of now uh, adopting a technology uh, for it now to be able to assist you. Because basically what we understand is uh, there's need for us to be able to blend in uh, that is between human uh, interaction and also part of it in terms of technology. Because as time goes by, uh, we always say that manual processes will no longer work for us. So uh, as an indication, uh, I said that technology uh, is something very integral, uh, especially for contact center. And uh, there's need for that, uh, for us not to be able to blend in between the human and technological resources. Uh, that is to ensure that you're able to create that is unforgettable experience uh, that is to your customers because it's only via customer experience whereby you're able to create a competitive advantage. Uh, because if we look across, you'll find that all the products, uh, services, uh, they might be the same across the board. But again, for a customer, what really matters uh, to them is uh, what is this thing that you're able to do for me that becomes unforgettable? Uh, that at any given time, uh, a certain brand X will be definitely be top of my mind. So we had quite a number of uh, challenges which we were experiencing when uh, we had started our contact center. And uh, as I had mentioned, uh, initially we had a switchboard, uh, which was what uh, we were using to be able to manage our calls. So thereby bringing the issue of inability to be able to route calls, because now uh, you're having 20 customers calling in at any given opportunity, only one customer can be served. Uh, so the rest of the customers will end up 
uh, not being attended to, uh, you will not be in a position uh, to call back just to be able to give them that service reassurance. Uh, quality uh, issue of call recording is again another very important aspect uh, whenever it comes into a contact center, either for training purposes uh, at any given time, provide, probably there are any grievances, how you'll be able to go back, replay a call to be able to get the facts and see how best you can be able to manage uh, the issue. So call recording facility is something that we lacked and uh, we said uh, this is a, a turnaround for us to be able to come or have a call recording facility to be able to help us uh, in terms of improving our services. Workforce management, uh, as we are aware, contact center uh, basically is determined uh, or a number of uh, employees is basically determined by uh, the call traffic or call volumes. Uh, so again, it's something that we are not able to determine end of day, how many calls are we able to receive, how many customers are dissatisfied, how many customers are happy, what are our peak uh, times whereby we need to have uh, full capacity resources, what are our off peak times whereby maybe we need one or two people just to be able to monitor and uh, manage our queues. Quality monitoring also comes in as a very good aspect because end of day, uh, we say that we want to give that uh, superior service. So if it's superior service, Quality monitoring is something that needs to be done and at uh, end of day, uh, it's more for like performance whereby you're able to coach your agents uh, for them to understand uh, that this is what is expected of them. And uh, by following certain uh, parameters or KPIs, you are able now to offer superior services. Uh, the nature of contact center because it's an all-rounder whereby you're able to manage each and every information. Having a knowledge center is very important, uh, commonly known as uh, FAQs, uh, whereby you serve uh, an agent, uh, you don't want a scenario whereby a call come in, uh, an agent has to open drawers for them to be able to get certain documents uh, for them to refer to and be able to advise customers. We want the process to be seamless. And again, having a very robust system comes in place whereby it's just a, a click of a button uh, or maybe you just type some keywords and you're able to get all the information. And after that, you can be able to advise your customers. Uh, that is uh, the way it's supposed to be. Then. Uh, Call disposition uh, majorly comes in whenever now you want to understand what are the trends, uh, what are my customers complaining about, what are the inquiries today and all that. So at times it comes in whereby uh, probably management will just pop into your office and ask you uh, what are our customers talking uh, about today and uh, unfortunately at that particular moment you do not have any system, it becomes very hard for you to be able uh, to explain or give some feedback. So it becomes more of a guesswork and again, doesn't really sound very professional. So call disposition was very key uh, to my side for it now to ensure that we're able to analyze the trends of customers and being able to know day-to-day uh, -day challenges as well as now customizing uh, processes uh, which can be able to suit the customers. Uh, then uh, management of emails and social media, again, is a very critical area because these are some of the customer touch points. And again, they cause a lot of uh, a lot of dissatisfaction, especially for emails and social media. If you are not able to respond to these uh, issues promptly, uh, it's a trigger or uh, it's just a time bomb whereby customers can be able to complain and uh, bring in a lot of fuss. So we said we also need to have a central management system whereby all social media, all emails can be able to have some tickets uh, whereby it becomes very easy for me to understand, analyze and know what are these issues that we are having. CRM, that is customer relationship management, also plays a very huge chunk uh, when it comes to issues of uh, customer service because again, you'd want to know uh, customer X, what are his trends? Uh, what are the issues that they were uh, that they had experienced maybe three months ago? What are the recurrent issues that are affecting my customers, and what am I able to be able to do uh, or to escalate and uh, to be able now to follow up? So it gives you a robust uh, place whereby you can be able now to keep your records, uh, analyze the engagements, and end of day, it's an issue that you can be able now to escalate to management and give them trends, and uh, end of uh, that you can be able now to have a backup and say. These are the issues which we're having and uh, this is uh, the way forward that we need to uh, move or now customize products based on uh, the needs. IVR service, uh, it's an interactive voice response. Uh, uh, gone are the days whereby you will just call in uh, and uh, just uh, either maybe get people talking to you and all that. You'll need to be welcomed because again, uh, that's how the customer journey is supposed to be. You have called a, a certain organization uh, how are they welcoming me? Because if you are not welcoming me, uh, then it basically means either you're not ready uh, to serve me, uh, and uh, it really comes in uh, as a very crucial part in terms of engagement. So being able now to separate uh, your different cues based on uh, different skill set uh, comes uh, in hand whenever now you're having these uh, IVR services. Uh, next slide, please. 
so uh, after that, uh, it was successful whereby now we're able not to implement uh, AMEO as part of our resource uh, to be able not to assist us in terms of now turning around uh, things. And uh, for us to be able not to measure the contact center in terms of success, uh, yes, AMEO will be able to give you uh, raw data, but now from the raw data, you need not to come up uh, with other aspects on how now, what do you want to measure uh, what are these smart KPIs that you can be able to develop for your agents uh, so that end of day you're able now to have this productivity, uh, you're able now to get value for money. And uh, part of the reports that we're able now uh, to formulate and dashboards uh, based on the particular uh, raw data uh, includes uh, agent productivity, whereby uh, for some other contact center you'll find uh, probably agents are being paid by the number of productive hours that they have. So Amel will be able now to tell you uh, if it's an agent, uh, how many hours have they been able to log in? What is the time they were able to start their session? How many breaks have they been able to take in and stuff like that? Again, for contact center, considering that it's volume based, uh, it's, be, uh, it's basically being guided by traffic. It's very important to understand how many hours are required and uh, how are agents being able to manage that one. So that one now touches about agent productivity and also agent efficiency. Then we have call efficiency, as I had mentioned, uh, customers are calling these particular dedicated lines for them to be able to get services. So what are your call efficiency, uh, which now end of day, it will going to be measured in terms of percentage, whereby we say probably if you're having anything between 85% uh, to 98, then we say the efficiency is okay. But at any given time, whenever now you're having very low call efficiency, what are you supposed to do? You need now to click and, uh, and understand what are the trends which are happening and all that. Break management also comes in uh, in place uh, because yes, uh, contact center, you'll always have uh, this dubious or people who will always want to take a lot of time and uh, try to be smart with the system. But again, once you have a very good robust system, you can be able even now to be able to measure uh, what are the hours which were taken for break vis-a-vis uh, -vis the productivity. Then SLA monitoring, uh, especially when now it comes to issues of social media, uh, issues of emails, you can be able to see this email came in at uh, this time, provided uh, it has been responded, was it responded satisfactory? Uh, what was the SLA that was taken uh, and all that. Call trends, whereby it can be able not to assist you in terms of uh, seeing where do I place uh, my agents most at what particular time and uh, also not to be able to come up with the different shifts. Then uh, call drop rate uh, is also another uh, issue or uh, another aspect which we're able to measure. Uh, considering that you want to know or to reach at least 100% of your customers. So we'll always say for any call uh, which probably came into IVR and stayed for about seven or eight seconds, uh, then we are mandated to be able to incur that particular cost to call this uh, customer back just to be able to understand what the issues were and be in a position to resolve. Then uh, average handling time, we do not want a contact center whereby uh, a call is going to last for five minutes, 10 minutes. Uh, it's not going to be cost effective. So again, we say average handling time, probably two minutes uh, max. And again, one or two issues whereby you'll have calls going overboard. Uh, you also need now to check uh, what was the issues and be in a position now to make follow up and uh, resolve the issue. Next slide, please. So in terms of uh, goals and improvement uh, of GAB, uh, that is uh, what we are having uh, for the near future. Uh, we're able now to see each and everyone is now uh, moving to issues of now embracing technology as opposed to brick and mortar. Uh, so what we're saying is we need to leverage on technology uh, that is to be able uh, to offer a superior service. And as I mentioned earlier, it's an issue whereby you need to create uh, in a balance between human interaction and where the technology will come in uh, for them now to be able to blend in. Um, then uh, issues of uh, being able not to uh, fully automate uh, processes, as I indicated that uh, most organizations are now looking at digitalization. You'd want, we're not saying that everything has to be done by robots, but again, it's being able not to create that seamless process, being able to offer fast service and superior service. And again, lastly, is being able not to optimize on our CRM, whereby we can ensure that each and every person within the banking uh, industry can be able not to have all issues logged at a central place. And at the end of the day, you're able not to get a 360 degrees view uh, for a customer just to be able to assist them. Next slide. Awesome. Uh, uh... Thanks, Phyllis. I think uh, uh, your experience has been really, uh, really, really valuable. Um, couple of yes. things I would not call them, call them highlights, but couple of things yes. uh, that you spoke were 
um, social media being a time bomb. So I've I've heard it. Yeah. Uh, I've 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 actually heard it time and again from a lot of uh, customer experience leaders like yourself uh, talking about uh, how not to manage social media and how to manage social media. There have been a lot of best practices around it, and still a lot of organizations I see are still struggling with it in terms of how to manage social media. But um, uh, I think uh, Gab uh, uh, has been doing a wonderful job. Congratulations. Uh, on uh, on that. Thank you, uh, you have you have also spoken about uh, you know s- customer service being a differentiator because at the end of the day uh, products um, and the and the differentiation uh, differentiation around products get copied very very quickly. So uh, so that was yes. one of the highlights. I think uh, creating uh, experience of service as a differentiator uh, is uh, one of the priorities of a lot of organizations, not only in banking, but in other sectors also, not in Africa, but uh, probably around the globe also. So yeah, yeah I think it cuts across. It's, it's like something global. Of course, of course, of course. And um, uh, and thanks, Vinay. I think your, uh, uh, your inputs on investment priorities for banks uh, in uh, next year, which was uh, around risk, around compliance and uh, around interaction management uh, uh, was something which was uh, which was a good takeaway. And within interaction management, what should be the priorities is something uh, uh, is uh, is something that uh, uh, that uh, uh, that was the highlight. And you also mentioned that uh, Africa uh, uh, leapfrogs uh, a technology generation, and I couldn't agree more. I've seen. Uh, Africa uh, leapfrogging uh, desktop generation, moving directly to laptops uh, is is something highlight. I'm pretty sure Africa will do it again. Um, so thank you so much for sharing your experience. So uh, uh, with respect to uh, uh, with respect to uh, making sure that you reach right uh, customer 360 degree uh, view, it is really important to understand the signs of silos and um uh, and you know you don't need to be inside the organization to figure out there are signs of silos you can figure it out right from sitting here i can figure out that whether within uh, gulf african bank there are signs of silos and i couldn't find one for that matter but yeah i mean you can you can sitting right here if you actually drop a query um, over an email or drop something over social media and then call them up uh, and if the caller is not aware that there is an email coming in or there has been a social media post uh, even after 24 hours then there are definitely signs of silos um, so uh, very very uh, very very simple things to figure out uh, organizations have started to become aware and how these silos start kicking in usually in the organization is when there is not when there is a uh, when there is an absence of uh, uh, a central uh, strategy around customer experience uh, with uh, a proper decision making authority so when that happens uh, you know signs of silos initiatives prioritizations uh, buy in with the management um, uh, getting right people in and a lot of other challenges disappear uh, accordingly but uh, uh, one of the challenges uh, that still remains um, or usually takes time is 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 uh, technology so uh, moving ahead next slide please so let's let's talk about technology a bit. I mean, uh, a lot of banks and in fact all the organizations they take um, they make a lot of technology investments, um, uh, trying to make sure that you know they create or reach a particular goal. These investments are um, are primarily uh, in four directions. And uh, uh, to begin with, um, I'll start with one at the bottom, which is the transactional systems. For banks, it is the core banking system, which is kind of sacrosanct for them. Um, uh, so transactional systems anyways have to be there. Uh, one, because of uh, 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 the compliance requirements because and also because each industry for that matter will have different types of needs. So transactional systems uh, definitely uh, come in there and it would be uh, different for different industry segments. Um, next three. Uh, are the ones which probably decide uh, your journey towards creating a good customer experience 
uh, and creating a 360 degree view. There is nothing right or wrong in, in the strategy. It's just a matter of prioritization uh, and uh, protecting your technology investments. First being the platform CRMs, which I believe a lot of organizations uh, do make investments around it. Third being, uh, second being, third being the uh, contact center technology. Uh, sometimes organizations uh, uh, make uh, those technology investments, but uh, again, as uh, uh, as was the case with Gab, and uh, as Vinay mentioned, in this particular case, Gab made a leapfrog in technology uh, to take a, um, a, a best of uh, the technologies that they could from the contact center perspective. Now, contact center may or may not come up with an inbuilt ticketing, and we have observed that a lot of organizations uh, create a separate structure for tech, uh, for ticketing either from platform CRMs or separate or from the contact centers and uh, uh, create a separate technology stack out of it. Now these four technology stacks are the ones uh, which need to be managed properly to make sure that you create a, uh, a customer 360, de uh, 360 degree uh, view to attain um, a differentiator in terms of customer service. Next slide please. Now, uh, the two different technologies, and this is not me speaking, uh, this is, uh, the, these are the words of Gartner. Gartner tracks two different technology segments, which is uh, one being the contact center infrastructure. Uh, they have been tracking this industry for about, I think, uh, 20 years now. And this industry, again, has evolved from uh, small IVR solutions or routing solutions to all-in-one um customer engagement voice led solutions for that matter uh, the second is is a bit recent which is customer engagement technology or customer engagement center uh, probably started with one uh, trying to uh, in which the organization started to handle uh, customer inquiries or complaints through digital technologies so uh, uh, what gartner says is you don't need to you actually uh, need just one and they also see that these two solutions will merge, but it's some years away. So, uh, however, both these uh, both the players from both the sides have started to offer uh, capabilities across the board to make sure that uh, the enterprises are able to reach that particular goal. Okay, so with that in mind, uh, with that in mind, uh, the challenges uh, are not only around, uh, you know, uh, build versus buy. It's not only about um, uh, uh, siloed versus omni channel. It's also uh, about, you know, what kind of channels do you want to manage? Uh, what sort of technology do you need? Uh, uh, depends on what are your goals at the end of the day. So uh, we have observed that. Uh, there are two sets of uh, uh, move to the next slide. So there are two sets of um, um, approaches that organizations take uh, in terms of uh, uh, in terms of uh, managing their technology. Uh, there's no right and wrong for that matter, but uh, 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 one approach being uh, you know managing multiple vendors for uh, multiple technology stacks. Uh, be it ticketing, contact center, platform CRMs, um, uh, transactional systems anyways are different. Uh, uh, however, rest of the three can be combined together to make sure that you provide a beautiful uh, customer 360 degree view. And uh, second being an all-in-one CEC suite which offers uh, best capabilities um, around um, uh, all the interaction channels and make sure uh, it has open APIs to integrate with the uh, transactional systems. Uh, now, uh, when you are going ahead uh, of choosing such technology, there are a lot of parameters that uh, you might want to consider. So um, uh, it can be integration complexities. Now, integrating two systems is already a complex and a large uh, project within a bank. Now, if you bring in third system, and in uh, and kind of integrate it with the other two systems, it becomes even more complex. Uh, not impossible, but complex for that matter. Now, uh, it depends on what kind of goals that you set for yourself and what kind of capabilities that you need. Uh, 
uh, at a certain point of time. However, uh, uh, if you go in for an all in one CEC suite integration complexities reduce and your time to market to get those services, uh, get those technologies uh, implemented at your organization reduce significantly. Uh, uh, the other important is other important thing is the is the workflow management. Um, uh, now, if there are two technologies or in case of all in one CEC suite, we have observed that uh, data coherence and um, workflow management uh, is much more streamlined than if you're talking about multiple vendors. And if in case there are multiple uh, multiple vendors, uh, the implementation of workflows across different platforms takes a lot of lot of time uh, which reduces the ability of an organization to quickly experiment and roll out changes okay uh, now uh, given um, a lot of ideas around here uh, in terms of you know what technology to choose it also depends on what is the existing technology stack that you have. So uh, the last suggestion uh, uh, before we conclude is, you know, always assess what you have uh, in terms of the technology stack before you start making um, uh, decisions around what to buy or what to build. Uh, with that, I would like to thank everybody who has joined. Ansh, over to you. Thank you, Rahul. <clears throat> Thank you, Vinay. Thank you, Fidelis. It was a in very interactive session. It was a very knowledgeable session. Uh, so I have few questions. Uh, uh, this one is for you, Vinay. Uh, so which specific digital channel do you think uh, has a better adoption rate in the Africa market? Uh, and do you think WhatsApp can be the next platform for the customer service in Africa? Uh I mean, that's uh, that's definitely something which is uh, taking shape a lot. Uh, uh, WhatsApp is clearly the one which is leading and followed by Telegram. So uh, technologies which have been uh, foreseeing these trends and have the connectors or have the APIs to connect WhatsApp. And also uh, WhatsApp for business is also uh, coming into this market. So many businesses are looking for it and also trying to approach WhatsApp to give a beta version for them to try it out. So definitely that's something what is taking a lot of shape. And uh, I'm, I'm really uh, glad to say that, okay, uh, Amio has uh, foreseen these trends coming up and, and has certain connectors which are already available for the customers to adopt. So definitely that's one thing which is going to uh, take more shape. And also certain bots built on WhatsApp is also something which is going to happen very soon for BFSI sector in this market. So uh, adoption of self-service using multiple channel is something which is what is looking as, as a future. Okay, okay. So uh, uh, thank you, Vinay. Uh, so there's a, another question for uh, Fidelis. Uh, as mentioned in the discussion that uh, you mentioned that Asian experience is equal to customer experience and uh, you have stressed more on the SLA's part and how agent experience can be the ne next big thing. So how is the, the gap empowering uh, agent, agent experience in, uh, to deliver better CX? Sorry, come again. Uh, how, how is the gap empowering uh, uh, their uh, agents to deliver better customer experience at gap? Okay, uh, so that is uh, basically how at GAB we're trying to improve on our uh, agent performance. Yes, yes. Okay, uh, so uh, when it comes into contact center, uh, there are quite a number of things that you're looking and uh, that's why I had mentioned uh, quality assurance is a very important uh, aspect. <clears throat> so uh, aspect of quality assurance, what you're trying to do is not to be able to incriminate uh, what the agents are not getting right. Uh, by just being able to get or understand what are the loopholes and what can be able not to be done in terms of uh, improving the same. Uh, so what we normally do is ensure that we're able to listen to different uh, calls uh, followed by uh, relevant uh, structured ways in terms of uh, what is the call flow and uh, what do we expect from a call. So from that one, you're able not to understand different uh, energy levels for different uh, agents. Uh, you can be able to coach them uh, so that they can be able not to reach us at
certain aspect where you want uh, your service ratings to be. Uh, another aspect would also come in uh, in terms of training, conducting necessary trainings, uh, because yes, uh, you might be having very robust systems and everything, uh, but are your agents equipped with the relevant uh, uh, product knowledge or relevant uh, product knowledge for them to be able to understand, comprehend uh, what your products are talking about? Because uh, in most cases, you'll always find uh, agents are very quick to dismiss customers, uh, having the fact that the next time this customer is going to call in, uh, we'll definitely get another different agent. And uh, we've had issues whereby a customer will be taken round and round, uh, then end of day, this customer will say, could I kindly please talk to your supervisor? And uh, by the time now, an issue is being raised to a supervisor, you'll always find it was a very minor issue. It was an aspect that you just required maybe to tell the customer, I'll be able to call you back. And I always say, it's never wrong uh, to admit that probably you lack some knowledge and tell a customer, uh, let me get information and I'll get back to you. Then end of day, you'll be able now to give them the relevant information uh, that they require about a certain aspect or a certain issue and it can be resolved. So those are the two angles which we normally focus on uh, at GMB just to ensure that we're able now to equip our uh, agents with relevant knowledge. Uh, apart from that, we also now uh, track that is uh, the daily uh, performance uh, captured by uh, weekly uh, whereby we're able to understand where are we doing good, uh, where are we not doing well, and uh, what is required, and you are able not to map uh, uh, that is processes or reviews whereby you can be able not to improve uh, thereafter. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Vidalis. So this is question is for you, Vinay. Uh, what are structured and unstructured bots? I guess you mentioned something in your slides. Uh, so can you please highlight uh, what are structured and unstructured bots? Sure, definitely. Uh, I mean, see, there is there is quite a bit of adoption of self-service in terms of chat principles as well, where you get into any kind of bot, whether it's a web a web chat or whether it's it's a chat on any of these popular platforms. Uh, there might be certain pre-defined question menus that are made available for customer customers or the prospects alike, and when you click on to any of them, you might get a canned response. But with the adoption of certain machine learning platforms that are uh, uh, placed underneath these technologies, uh, there is a lot of analytics happening in terms of understanding the kind of questions uh, which the customers do ask, whether it's over a voice or you over an email. And those questions are, are given with a lot of permutation and combination as to how a customer might ask the same question in a different format and trying to come up with the most relevant or most uh, reasonable answer for those questions is what the unstructured bots are coming up with. So there might be very soon where you don't have to select a question to get a canned response, but you can type your own question in your own format, but with the uh, algorithm what the system might be using, you will certainly get the same answer to the question uh, what you have asked. So this is uh, the difference between a structured and an unstructured bot, where the structured bot, uh, to just conclude in the, as a gist, the structured bot is where there is a predefined question and a predefined answer which is available for that, and you click that question and you get the answer. And the unstructured one is where you will type the question in your own way uh, by using the algorithms, by using uh, the test cases, the system will be able to answer uh, the most relevant or most appropriate answer to the question that you have asked. Okay, okay. Thank you, Vinay. So there is another question for Rahul. Uh, so this is regarding social media. Uh, majority of the uh, interactions or majority of uh, the businesses that they go, they usually ask their first point of uh, asking for, from a technology part is for calls and emails. Uh, <clears throat> but the today's digital customers they mostly, uh, when they interact with the company, they interact through social media, uh, either through Twitter or Facebook, so Facebook Messenger or via chat from from the from a website chat. So, what should be the first action point for a business here, and how do you convince this uh, these companies that know uh, social media is where you should also pitch in? Uh, okay. So, uh, first of all, good question. Again, uh, uh, referring to uh, Fidelis here, I think social media is a time bomb. Uh, it is it is something that uh, uh, we cannot avoid. Uh, however, the statistics 
uh, recently published by i think uh, i think it was uh, it was kpmg or uh, pwc it uh, it mentioned that you know um, the interactions over um, uh, web uh, email and the voice still constitute about you know 90 95% if i'm remembering my numbers correct uh, of the total interactions that are happening social media is still less uh, from the customer service standpoint now uh, however we cannot ignore it right because uh, any negative uh, publicity on social media will probably have a million times more impact than whatever is happening on uh, chat email uh, and calls combined correct right? so uh, so that is that is what the power of consumer uh, has become uh, with the advent of all these social media platforms so what do businesses do here now uh, first important thing is if you don't have any social media strategy around customer service you should immediately put one in place uh, when i say put one in place um, it means that you know depending upon what kind of volumes you are getting depending upon um, uh, who is responsible for social media in the organization depending upon your budget depending upon your uh, existing technology you should immediately put in uh, a standalone social media with some sort of uh, stitching between your contact center and uh, social media customer service teams uh, and then uh, if not this then um, uh, possibly move to a better practice of having a holistic uh, customer service in which data points across all these channels are shared properly between all the teams even if social media is being managed by a different a uh, team for that matter in a in an in an organization uh, so that's that's what i would uh, suggest okay thank you rahul thank you vinay thank you fidelis uh, for this very interactive session uh, there i guess there You're are welcome. more questions coming in but we'll uh, answer those questions in mail uh, thank you everyone thank you attend attendees uh, we'll be sharing an ultimate guide to revolutionize customer experience in the banking and insurance sector uh, ebook with you as a, a free guide Thank you for attending today's webinar. Thanks, uh, Ansh, for hosting it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everybody. Cheers. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, Ansh. Thank you, Ansh. Bye bye.